We're talking with Chuck Ashley, New Iberia, Louisiana. Chuck Ashley, and we want to present for those who are ever out there, maybe they want to get involved to help. So led to so do. So, Chuck, I thank you for taking the time and talking with us here. Uh, You're welcome. If you would, uh, you want to take us back and uh, give us a little bit about the Chuck Ashley story, I guess, from birth till uh, a certain point in time in your life, and then we'll take it from there. Well, I, uh, my parents moved uh, to Louisiana when I was five, uh, divorced when I think I was 11, and at that point, my dad, my dad and I went to live with his parents in Centerville. Um, I had started, you know, went through grade school. I was in seventh grade there in Centerville, then I went from seventh grade till I finished. Mm-hmm. Um, and it was in 1975, and then back in that era, you could go a half a day, half a year. So I would uh, go to school a half a day, and then maybe work in the cane fields the other half of the day until dark just for extra money, until I was old enough, um, you know, to get a, a job uh, with my dad, which I had to be 18 to get on water. But because of that reason, I couldn't go on water. Uh, so they put me hot shot driving. Mm-hmm. And... I was on my days off, and um, you know this. You know, I went through all. You know, I graduated with my class. My dad had put a down payment on a car, and the deal was that uh, not not the down payment. I mean, and I was gonna pay the first. He was gonna pay the first six months insurance, and I was gonna take. You know, pay the notes because I had a job lined up, but I just couldn't couldn't go in water because of my age. Right. So he was a dredge boat captain, and. Anyway, uh, I went back, um, I got the car the 11th of May, and I went on stage, graduated with my class um, the 22nd of May, then I broke my neck the 4th of July. Um, so I got to drive it. It was a Mustang, too. That was the, the best, it was, a, you know, it was better than walking which, or hitchhike. It was my main mode of transportation back in the day, you know. Right, right, right. So you you got to drive the car a little bit, but on July 4th, uh, what, tell us about the incident. When and, and well, how did it, it happen? Actually, it was, uh, I can't remember uh, if, it, if it was a Saturday or a Sunday, uh, but it was in the summertime, July 4th. Me and a bunch of friends, we decided to go swimming mm-hmm. you know we've been been out to Vernon's point and we've been out there all day you know and i mean they had all kind of people out there you know people that were camping and you know just they was on uh skis uh, just doing all kind of stuff out there you know sure. it was just uh that was the place to do it you know so i we've been out there all day well i guess around four o'clock in the afternoon me and two friends decided well let's go swimming because it's hot you know mm-hmm. and I love being on water, you know, mm-hmm. um, and my friend Scott as well. Mm-hmm. You know, I mean, we stayed in the bayou, which was the nastiest thing on earth, but <laughs> I had a lot of fun on it. But, you know, uh, anyway, decided to go swimming this particular day around 4 o'clock afternoon, and me and my friend Scott and another guy stood on the pollens, and um, we dove. Mm. And I meant to make my body shallow dive, but instead of it coming right back up, I hit bottom. Uh, and when it hit, I broke C4 and C5, uh, both vertebrae in my in my neck, and it paralyzed me. But at that given point, I didn't understand why. Mm-hmm. All I knew is that something was definitely wrong because I couldn't move anything. Right, right. You know? Right. So I was trying to swim, but I, like I said, my body was in the motion of a flip. So my the, the first thought came to my mind: Golly, if I want to get up to the surface of the water, I need to hold my breath. So I held my breath, and I had started aspirating water, but there was just way, way too much Burns Point water for me to drink. I couldn't drink all of that, mm-hmm. <laughs> you know. And finally, the two guys that I was going with with me, going swimming with me, uh, Scott and this other guy, they waded over to me right when they picked me up. I was just about to drown. I had one breath. I was about mm-hmm. to go under because I just couldn't. Um, I couldn't. I couldn't drink anymore. I was, you know, just dr- I was drowning. Right. Right. Um, and so then they asked me what was wrong. I said, "Man, I said I don't know. I just I can't move anything. Mm-hmm. You know, I, I didn't understand. I figured, well, I would go to the hospital and possibly give give me a shot, and I'd be on my way. You know, well, little did I know what a life changing moment 
that would have been for me. You know right. what I mean? I right. you know, went through school. I just, it was in my senior year, you know, and I graduated. I never had failed, no, you know, all throughout school. And so uh, Scott and the guy, that other guy, would carry me up some steps, and they was going from, they had all this green algae stuff on the steps, so they went from the first step to the third step. And as I was going up, they, you know, they, I slipped out of their hands and mm-hmm. I fell back below the steps. So they had to come back in a second time to get me. Mm-hmm. So then the second time they made it up on land and laid me out and they kept, you know, people gathered around me and, you know, still I wasn't able to move anything. I was conscious, but then I started, my, my breathing was getting compromised. Um, and they had a man that was running the, uh, intercoastal canal bridge. Well, he had the bridge up, let it, letting all the boats coming in and out from, um, you know, the bay get into the inter- intercoastal canal, you know, and the sheriff's office in St. Mary Parish had to call him and tell him to put the bridge down so the ambulance could cross to get me. Mm-hmm. And like I said, you know, they got me in the ambulance and put me in that collar. And I was all, I, I never lost consciousness, right. you know, and then they brought me to uh, Franklin Foundation. They gave me a shot for pain, w- sent, sent me on to Lafayette General, where from the 4th of July to the 15th, I was there 11 days, which I don't remember a whole lot because I was so, so sedated. But the last thing I remember was the neurosurgeon. They were shaving the sides of my head, you know, getting ready to put me in traction. Mm-hmm. And... Little did I know, you know, like I said, I I thought, well, you know, I'm going to get a little shot or two or whatever, and I'm going to be okay. You know, I I, paralysis was never on my mind as being, I mean, I I never thought, you know, this was going to happen to me. You know, I didn't Mm -hmm. know kind of what the word meant, let alone it, you know, being considered paralyzed. Sure, sure. I stayed there 11 days, and uh, what happened was I began to die. I started having a lot, a lot of spinal cord complications, so they sent me to Houston at a um, Texas Institute of Rehab and Research where this hospital specializes in spinal cord injuries. Mm-hmm. And I was, you know, I was in traction, number one, but number two, my lungs had collapsed, so I had a trach on me, um, and... I breathed off of a breathing machine probably from July until probably sometime in September before I actually got off, mm-hmm. you know, because my lungs, thank God my lungs came back. I was able to use that, but, you know, I, I'm only able now just to, um, I can move my arms. Now, none of my fingers I can move. I can't move my legs at all. Right. But, um, and I'm, I'm very thankful for what I do have. Um, you know, it didn't, like, say, mess up my brain or anything like that. Just how it could have been a lot worse. Sure, sure. We're talking with Chuck Ashley. Brandonspennies.org is going to be the website for folks to go to because we have an objective here that, uh, as you've heard, Chuck, from July 4th, 1975, here we are into 2015. And uh, you d- describe a day in the life now, I guess, for you because we want to get your vehicle, which is. Uh, okay. Um, your van paid off so that you can have extra living expenses. So if you don't mind itemizing or, or tell us about a, a day in the life of uh, Chuck Ashley right now and uh, uh, what, 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 because you have goals and you have aspirations right. and you don't want to just sit around the house, do you? No, not at all. I mean, I went to college since I broke my neck and I got my degree. And um, the whole problem now, what, I have a volunteer position at the sheriff's office here mm-hmm. locally. In my town, um, where I can go and volunteer my time, you know, you know, I get up. They, I picked up around nine o'clock, and they bring me back home around three. And um, you know, I, I have to pay. You know, there's gasoline expenses, just upkeep of the van, but mm-hmm. more importantly, just to make the van. Note, um, mm-hmm. I had two vans prior to this, and I had them for thirteen years apart, but. I, this van that I have does have a lockdown device and a seat belt, and I've never had a van with a, neither one. Mm-hmm. You know any kind of uh, lockdown device? Because if I would have ever got an accident, right, they would I would have went through the windshield. 
Right. I mean, and, and that's how important this is to me. And if if something's wrong, if somebody was to hit me in my van, depending on where, it, whatever the reason may be, I mean, I'm just without anything because I don't, you know, I don't have public, public transit out where I live. Sure, sure. And but getting back to your original question, I, I get up in the morning. Um, I take a shower. I have a nurse that dresses me. Um, they're here for just a few hours, and I'm up in my wheelchair. And then you know I leave, go to the sheriff's office, and I stay there until it's unless I'm feeling bad and want to come home earlier. Mm-hmm. But I go do you know clerical type stuff that they tell me to do, and I I cannot receive pay because of the fact that. If I receive the pay and Social Security determines that you or you can live off of that pay, you lose the the right. Social Security. And the money is important. But what's worse for me is the Medicare part because without Medicare, I can't get Medicaid, mm-hmm. which is vital to me because I could get sick at any point. Right. You know, end up in an emergency room. Right. And uh, but I I I go. I'm out. You know, I have to wear. Uh, shirt and tie. I try to look the best I can, you know, because I'm depending on, you know, someone else to get a, getting, you know, getting me dressed and whatnot. I, um, and, you know, my other days, uh, I have a, you know, uh, a treatment here at my home that I have to, you know, I'm here all every day on the Tuesdays, Thursdays, and weekends. And right now with all the budget cuts, you know, I'm pretty scared about my hours that sure. I receive. Sure. Which it doesn't have anything to do with the, the you know, it's just the the van note takes it's it's such a big portion of my check and it's worth it. It's just that I know you know, I get to the point where, you know, like right now I I be I only have thirty two dollars and seventeen cents in my checking account. Mm-hmm. You know, and it's nobody's fault, you know. It, it it just, you know, you know. I I just made a terrible, terrible mistake when I did break my neck, and you know, I don't, you know, I don't blame anybody for for know it for, for it. You know, I I don't take life for granted anymore. I look at life a whole lot differently, and you know, I don't even mind being broke. It's just the van would help me at least to pay my light bill. Sure, sure. And so I guess help me understand because, uh, you know, and, and, and Chuck, here's the thing. And when people hear the story, I think they're going to be willing to, and, and to, to contribute just to get this off, this note down. Okay, uh, right. It's it's a, a monthly note of $450, correct? No, well, no it's, it's $487.32. 487 right. And then uh, I think 9000 roughly is the goal to get that paid off and get and it. I, I, like right now, I believe with them taking off this, like, my October payment, you mm-hmm. know, because it's automatically debited from my account. Right. Uh, I have a direct deposit, and I think it brought it down to like eighty nine or something like that. Okay. Yeah. Okay. Give or take, I, I, I would I would be lying to you if I told you the exact figure, but it's on. You know, I can view it at any given point. Sure. You know, and and it it'll tell me exactly what I owe. Sure. It's but it's somewhere in that range. Chuck Ashley is who we're speaking with. Brandonspennies.org is going to be the website for folks to go to to make contributions there to get this thing taken care of. Um, you do not drive, correct? Somebody actually drives the van for right. you? Okay. okay. Right. Well, they, uh, for the days that uh, I go to the sheriff's office, a deputy c- comes, picks me up, and they leave another car here, and me and the deputy go in my van to the sheriff's office. Mm-hmm. And I, I keep it with me all day. That way, if say if I needed to leave, I would have the ability to leave. They, he could always come back and get the second vehicle anytime he chooses. Right, right. I got so, you. But that's my main, um, you know, when, that, when in fact I don't have anything else to go back and forth. Sure. You know, and I knew when I encountered um, the, the, the van, I just wanted something safe where I had a seatbelt and a lockdown device, and I never had that with with the other two vans that I did have because like I said if I I, I guess I was just living on God's good graces cuz if I would have ever got in an accident I w- would have went through the windshield. Mm, right. Now I'm, this van is it, at least it locks me down and I am I, I am seat belted. Sure. Sure. 
So, so it's if, if we if we if we can help alleviate and get rid of this note, then you got that that extra four hundred and right. eighty seven, and that's yeah. okay. Well, that's going to yeah. be the goal here, Chuck. Um, to, to help me to you know, I mean, I'm I'm talking about whatever I, you know. You know, like I said, I don't mind being broke. You know, it just sure. it gets, and I know the economy is high. You know, I'm I'm I don't drink or smoke or anything. I don't I have no bad habits. I just I'm trying to do the the best that I can. You know. Sure, you, sure. You know, with what I have, you know, and it's just you know the. How you say that? You have more month to check. Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. Sometimes you, you run, you run out of. Uh, yeah, there's more yeah. month than than money left to it, go. It, but then, then the money's gonna stretch out. Yeah. Sure, sure. We 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 all understand that. Yeah. But at the same time, when somebody has a little uh, extra burdens, we want to come along and help. And that's what that's what we're going to be trying to do for you. And um, uh, Chuck Ashley is whom we're speaking with. Brandon'spennies dot org for folks to go to. And um. I'm just trying to think. I mean, uh, you must obviously have a lot of thoughts, and I mean, your attitude is uh, exemplary. It's awesome, my friend. Uh, tell oh, us. Oh, that's nice of you to say that. Thank you. And, and Thank s- you very much. Oh yeah, no, no, no. Tell us, tell us, because uh, we out here, you know what I mean. I guess you've heard that old adage. You know, I used to feel sorry for myself because uh, I didn't have any shoes till I found somebody who didn't have any feet. Isn't that the truth? And so, um, yeah. Why don't you get see this? I, you're a I, source of inspiration. I don't know if you know that. Well, I, I just, like I said, I, you know, li- life dealt me a different kind of hand, and mm-hmm. I'm just trying to, you know, make, you know, make the best of it of sure. what I have. You know, it could be the way I look at it, it could be a lot, lot worse. Yeah, you yeah. know, and you know, at least I can add two and two to still come up with the right number. There you go. You what, know, and what's your degree in? What college? I got a uh, degree. To, um, Associate in Science and Business Administration mm-hmm. from uh, Delgado. Whenever I was going to Delgado, in, living in New Orleans, I lived there. At one point, I was evaluated in Shreveport. Um, my plan was never to go to college, but me breaking my neck kind of changed my goals as mm-hmm. well as my, um, you know, what I was going to do in life. Right. So I always thought, well, you know, if I if I do anything in life, it was got to be with my head, mm-hmm. you know, thinking and being, you know, computerized stuff. Right. Because you know, we didn't even have computers in our school. Right. At, at that at that point. Well, here's something that I'm hearing, and I, I I this is the first time I've ever met you, but you got a great voice, you got a great mind, you can be a great counselor on the phone, and I mean, I'm just throwing that out there down yeah. the road. Uh, um, wow. yeah, you, you, you know what I'm saying? There's a yeah. lot of people that would like to hear your, well, actually you just be a listener. You know what I right. mean? Yeah. Um, I'm just, I'm just throwing that off the top of my head because I, and you know, it's like, I, like I said, you know, there's not a lot like I can't, I can't go out and wash your car for you, right. you know, and I can't do the, you know, a lot of physical things, but you know, I can respect you and I, I can say thank you and I, and I can, you know. Always say yes, sir. To you, I, I don't. You know, I can be. I was raised that way. You know, to you know, at least say thank you. And when somebody does something for me, I appreciate it. When I say I appreciate it from my heart, it's from my heart. Sure, I'm not saying it just to say it to make the world go round. No, 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 no. And I hear that. And here's the thing, too, Chuck. You you know the the world is one of the biggest character qualities that's missing out here is empathy and. And you sure got it, and you sure can give it. Thank you. Thank you so, so much. Um, what else can uh, we possibly, you say, maybe just to help us help you? It's, like I said, it's mainly just to help me, you know, it, the, the, like I said, that van don't take a big, it, it's hard for me, but all, I know on the other end, of, I, I need a way to, anywhere I go, I need, I use it, mm-hmm. unless it's like, before having to go buy ambulance, sure. You know? Well, and so I don't, I don't have alternative transportation. <laughs> right, right. I got you. I got you. Well, as I'm understanding how this thing is developing, the Brandon'sPennies dot org is going to be the site, and then I think they were going to set up a little side thing, and, and we called it Chuck's Wagon. Did, <laughs> did did Dot tell you that? Well, no, no I didn't get to talk, get to talk with her in depth about it. just real briefly. I was trying to get the pictures of her of myself in the van to her. Mm-hmm. I got him. I got him. And, and I never, we were never able to, like, like talk in depth 
about it. Well, you know. and actually, this thing is just being created as we go. So, I mean, uh, there's no master plan. It just is unfolding as it's uh, happening. So I, I kind of, she told me about Chuck, and I'm thinking, oh, his van and Chuck's wagon. So let's get this thing taken care of so you can move on to bigger and better things. Yeah, and it's just, like I said, I live, you know, I get scared because I'm not going to have, you know, X amount to be able to make, you know, my bills, you know, I mean, right. And, what what other bills do you have that maybe the audience could understand? Well, I mean, I just have just regular house bills. You know, I, I you know, I have a house note. I have, you know, just regular like cable, mm-hmm. uh, what you call it. Uh, I'm all electric, you know, right. so I don't have gas, right? You know, but uh, it's just, you know, you have to at some point in your in your. Um, you know your money. You have to figure out. Well, I have to figure out something to eat. Sure. You know, I got to get some. You know, and I try to eat the best I can. You know, of, of the things that I need. You know, of things that are healthy because I am diabetic, so I, I can't just eat anything. Right. Right. I got you. Well, but go ahead. But anyway, I mean, that's like I said, the van. You know, it's just I'm so so grateful for it. It's just it takes like over almost half of my income Mm -hmm. but you know i know that's i I knew that before i you know bought it i mean i knew it was gonna take up i wanted to be i didn't want to get killed either in an accident sure sure well let's stay in touch and um let's see where this goes and grows and then let's get this thing taken care of uh and and this is the the beauty of this chuck is there's going to be just like you and I are strangers, but I feel a kindred now, and I mean, there's well, no, a bu- I, I was going to say that, yeah, I feel like I know you good now, huh? <laughs> well, I, and there's a bunch of other strangers out there that are just going to come alongside, and uh, we'll just see how this thing uh, manifests out. Yeah, well, I sure thank you, for, you know, like, for calling, and I appreciate what you're doing to try to help this, help me get this thing into an affordable <laughs> yeah. uh, situation where it's not you know, mess me up, but not mess me up, but... Well, it's it's stressful is what I'm hearing, and we yeah, you, don't, you, don't very, very, that, you don't need yeah, that. Yeah, I, I find myself just sometimes just crying because I just don't know about the next day, mm-hmm. you know, and it, it, it tears me up, you know, but then after I think, I said, well, you know, I shouldn't, let me think a different way, you know. Right. You know. Right. So, uh but no, I, I was going to tell you if, you, if too, if you need to ask me any, any other questions, you know, just feel free to call. I will, I will, and uh, and yeah, let's stay in touch, and and we're, you know, this is a process. It it, it won't happen overnight, but it right. may, may happen quicker than any of us ho- hopefully uh, envisions. Yeah, and uh, like I said, thank you for your involvement in it. I really do appreciate it, and you know, however it goes, you know. Uh, you know, I, I just, you know, I like to say I appreciate the call and all the little things that you are able to be able to do for it, you know. Well, um, my, my, my honor. Hopes, my I honor. hope someday I can repay the favor for you, you know. <laughs> yeah, well, you're, you're, you're doing it wherever you're at, so not yeah. to worry, my friend. Well, well, Chuck, thank you so much, and uh, let's, uh, we'll, we will stay in touch. Okay, you're welcome, and I'd like to say thank you for calling, okay? No problem. All right, I'll see you. All the best. All right. Okay. Bye.